welcome to the last installment of our Stitch Resampler Sew Along. Can't believe that we've been at this together for 13 weeks. This week we are working on our final sashing and setting and borders and I have lots of good hints and tips for you guys. So come on and join me. Welcome back friends. We are done with all of the blocks for the Stitch Resampler and we are working on our sashings and our borders today and I have a couple of different hints and tips and things to walk you guys through. We're working on, if you're following along in the pattern on page, starting on page 23 and working our way through to the next set of pages. So um, a couple of important things when it comes to borders um, as well as sashing. So whenever you have a pieced border that has a specific size that it needs to be, so these sawtooth blocks come to a certain size at the end and they have to be able to fit into here. So the reason, because um, we've gotten this question several times, the reason that the sashings are different sizes and that these borders are different sizes is 100% to make the sawtooth border fit mathematically, okay? So when you're cutting your sashing, first let's talk about the sashing first. So um, if you've already done this, then you've noticed that the width of this sashing is a different width than this sashing. So what that ends up doing to the posts is it makes them rectangles. So as you cut your sashing pieces, be very careful to label them like they're labeled in the pattern and keep them separate. So I think it's your A's go here and your B's go here. Let me just double check. Yeah, your B's are the ones that are in between. So once you've cut them, label them as B and separate them out from the A because they are a different width and you don't want to invert them because if that happens, your length will end up being longer than it needs to be and the top of your quilt or the this part side of your quilt will be squishier, shorter than you want it to be. Squishier, that's a very official word. So um, tip number one is keep those separate from one another and be careful with those. Mark them and pay attention. Once you're done adding your sashing to your blocks all the way around and notice that it has what's referred to a lot of times as a sashing border, which means the sashing doesn't just finish on the inside of the blocks, but goes all the way to the outside and surrounds them with a border that matches the ones on the inside. So that is basically the inside part of your quilt. Once you get to that part, you're then going to be adding this inner white border on the top and on the side. And once again, just like it is with the sashing, these two are two different sizes. So if you can see here, um, this is skinnier and this is a little bit wider. Again, the reason for that is we're basically making our way up math wise so that our, the inside of our quilt, by the time it gets to here, fits perfectly on our sashing, I mean, on our sawtooth border, okay? So there's a couple things that you might wanna do here. Um, personally, the way that I did this process is I did my sawtooth borders first and I assembled them into the top and into the sides like it is in the pattern. Once I have those, I can measure them and I can know if I want this to be, if for some reason I'm way off and something has gone slightly wonky for me, I still have a chance to basically make these bigger and trim them down to size. I didn't need to do this here because the math should work out exactly. But if for some reason um, you get got to that point, this is kind of like the last checkpoint. So I recommend, so for this quilt that I'm working on or this version, I'm making mine yellow and green. I'm actually potentially thinking of changing the green to orange at the very last minute. But for right now, they're yellow and green. And so I've made my pieces, this is a top and a bottom piece, and I've already sewn them together all the way through to the corner, okay? So mine is a scrappy yellows, and when it comes to the corner, I'm using green for those little corner posts and those last sawtooth. So once I have this, I've pieced the two top and I've pieced the two bottom, I can measure them and I can make sure that they are what this is in the pattern. So my little hint for you guys is um, the these the short ones the top and bottom when pieced all the way all the way out those should finish at 46 inches 
according to the math of this pattern. And the long ones, the ones on the left and the right, here's one, these should fit, finish at 53. Okay, that's the left and the right. So I think that if for some reason your pieces are not coming out to that, then I would be real careful. I might make these bigger and trim them down just so you don't get to the end and you don't have a lot of issues. Um, that's kind of the beauty of having an inner uh, white border that floats and kind of sets this off from this is that you can fudge this guy if you need to to make your pieced um, border fit. Now, again, mathematically, given that we have worked real hard to have those be in there to set it off and this and this different sizes, you should have a spot on exact fix. But I just wanted to tell you guys about this kind of a thing that any time in a quilt you have a pieced border that has an inner border that's just the background, you basically at that point have an opportunity to fudge this a little bit if you need to in order to make this work. This is almost impossible to fudge, right? Because you have all of those points coming together in a specific shape, whereas in this, you don't. So that's kind of my little border tip, especially for pieced borders. So I've done my my um, my sawtooth borders. I'm going to set those aside that I showed you. And I just wanted to show you guys my, this is what I decided to do for my current sampler. Um, I chose a little delicate print for this one that I'm to doing so totally scrappy. Um, since I decided to do this version totally scrappy, more even more scrappy than the original, um, I decided to use something that was a little bit lighter um, for the sashing, not quite as strong. Um, I love the one that we did here in this in the original um, when the blocks are a little bit more uniform. But since I went totally scrappy on this one, I thought a lighter print would work better. So. I'm up to that point on here. Um, I will be adding my borders and then those sawtooth borders, and I will have a blog post with what this looks like with a lot of pictures once we're done. But since I'm working alongside of you guys, I'm not quite there yet. So hopefully that is helpful and you guys have enjoyed um, this process. Um, basically at this point, you're at the end of the booklet. And if you can see here on the very last um, pages, it tells you, um, it gives you some info if you wanted to do it in a Christmas version, if you loved this, wanted to do it again. I've also seen some people do a Christmas version that's smaller as um, like a large table topper or a wall hanging, which would be a fun, um, would be a fun project as well. And um, you'd then just have the sawtooth border be the same as the top and bottom on the sides as well, the same sizes. So uh, I really hope you guys have enjoyed this process. Um, it's been wonderful to be here with you guys every week. And like I said, um, we'll have pictures and a finishing blog post up next week on this guy once I get it all together. Thanks for joining us. So I just wanted to show you guys my quilt top before I put my yellow sawtooth on. It is yummy and scrappy. And I'm loving it just as much as the original. Not sure... I'm going to have a favorite or not, but here it is. Can't wait to finish it.